and I'm going to talk to you today about how a creator can benefit your staff during their working week. As mentioned, my name's Gary Rees. And I've been working um, at Nexus for about six years now, and I work closely alongside the development team. And for today's purpose, I'm the Equator SME. So the best place for me to start is to explain what Equator actually is. So Equator is an all-in-one HR, payroll, time and attendance, and shop floor data collection system. The modules all sync together. However, in essence, they are modular. So payroll is essentially what it is. It is a weekly, two weekly, four weekly, or monthly payroll system, fully extensive. Personnel is for completing your HR administration, whether that's disciplinaries, appraisals, grievances, or booking holiday and absence records. Time and attendance that performs time swipes and can be used for booking holiday and absences as well. And you can use those time swipes to generate payroll data. Our shop floor data collection is our production workflow management system and portal is our employee portal where employees can log in, view documentation and make absence holiday and overtime requests. So to prove how this can be useful during a working week, I'm gonna introduce you to two fictional employees. On the left, we have Max. Max is the production team leader. He's on swing shifts. And I define swing shifts as being morning this week, evening the week after, and then maybe nights the week after that on a recurring basis. And he's an on-site worker, and his wage is an hourly wage. Gemma, on the other hand, she's an HR and payroll manager. She works Monday to Friday, nine to five, and she works three days in the office, two from, and two from home. She's a, she's a hybrid worker, and she's salaried. And they both work for our fictional company, Mailmate, and Mailmate, is a company that mass produces letters, encloses them into envelopes, and then dispatches them through the post. And we're gonna look at their working week and how they can use Equator to benefit them. So on Monday, we're gonna see how they clock into work. At 10 o'clock, Gemma's gonna update Max's benefits. At 10.30, Max is gonna clock out for break, make an overtime, absence, and holiday request. Before at two o'clock, he's gonna manage some shift patterns. And then at five o'clock, we'll see how they clock out for the day. So starting in the morning, Gemma clocks in using portal. And you can see here, she enters her employee number in and it clocks her in. So it's portable. She's using a desktop computer that's just on her, on her desk. You could have a shared unit or you could, if you had tablets or a mobile phone, you have access to the portal, you could clock in from there. It's perfect for hybrid workers. It must be pointed out that if you use the time swipe on this page, it actually uses a batching method. So what you would do is you would have a, a schedule set up in the Equator core system that would collect all those batch clock-ins and then it would run a validation process um, at any interval that you design, two minutes, five minutes, whatever suits your needs. I just want to point out, if you have S SFDC in real time, there's this shop floor data collection button over here. If you were to click on there and then perform a time clocking, it would work in real time instead. So you'd immediate, immediately get updated within the system. It's cost efficient. If you have a device, a mobile phone, a tablet, and you've got an employee portal account, you can just log in and time swipe. There's no need to fix terminals uh, or pay for installation or run wiring through the building. And there's no queues, so you're not going to have people queuing up at a terminal before they're finished work because they know they need to clock out to get out of work. On the other hand, Max clocks in at this GT4 clock. So this is a clock provided by Grosvenor, which is a supplier that we work with to provide these clocks. So he works in a facility where they're dealing with letters. So there's names, there's addresses, there's confidential information. So it's important, there's ISO regulations and GDPR regulations that need to be abided by. So it's important that it's secure and that only certain people with certain access levels can clock in at these terminals. So we could use an access badge, so we could swipe a badge that's on the persons, or we can use a biometrics, which is what Max is using in this case. Or to take the security one level further, we've been working with Suprema to deliver these facial recognition system and clocks. They're robust. So you set them up, they're in a fixed location. 
their time and test proven in a production facility. And it syncs with your TNA, SFDC real time and payroll. And a further note, we can have Cisbro MOM integration. So if we're using Cisbro MOM for our workflow management, and we've already clocked into work using Equator and we have TNA in real time, then there's no need to duplicate our clock-ins. Because Equator integrates with MOM, the clock-ins can be shared. And I just want to show you how we can do that. So we've logged into SFDC, we've put our employee badge number in, and it's set us to arrive. Then if we look at within Cisbro MOM, that employee, the first one, is now in and idle and ready to work. With that done, Gemma needs to update Max's benefits at 10 o'clock. And here we have the benefit summary program. So we've got this one location where you can update all your benefits. And it will detail the value and the cost. So the value to the employee and the cost to the employer. And in addition to this, on the right hand side, there's a pane that details the total remuneration package. So if your employees ever ask what their total remuneration package is, you'll be able to see, and you can see the total cost of that to the employer. Furthermore, there's a button in the top right for salary history, which will detail the current salary, and then you review dates for further salary reviews. It's fully integrated with portals, so any changes made instantly in the employee benefit summary program, they'll be able to view them within their portal. At 10.30, Max uses that biometrics terminal to clock out for his break. So he's currently set to break. And he's heard there's some overtime opportunities on Wednesday. And he's got a hospital appointment on Thursday. So we're going to see him book an absence request and then make a holiday request on Friday. And I'm just going to demo this for you now. So here we are, our equator login. And we're using our email address login. So once logged in, one thing a lot of people are unaware of, you can actually have your company logo displayed up here, which you could change with under your settings if that's something you're interested in. So we've had this some overtime and we've got this self-service center here. So I click on here and this is where I can make all my requests and review my documentation. So Wednesday, overtime opportunities. Let's get it booked. I'm in the overtime request section and I change it for two hours work. We've had, there's a problem with workload. You could put the name of the person you want to test if you want to authorize it here or their employee number. And that request has now been made and it's sitting with the line manager to authorize. So with the overtime request done, we now need to book the absence. So Max has got a hospital appointment on Thursday. So he goes to book his request for the Thursday and he wants to do it for a half day after lunch. His reason is a hospital and he could put a comment in here if he wants as well for the line manager to see. You can now see that this request is currently pending. There is a feature here where you can auto authorize requests as well. So say there's a particular sensitive subject such as a funeral for a spouse or a child. So I'll do that now. We we'll select the 29th and all day, and we've got the funeral for the spouse or child. Because it's a particularly sensitive subject, we want this to be automatically authorized. And this is automatically booked. There's no need for line manager authorization. And you can do this within the core product. So you can design what holiday and absence requests you want to require authorization, which ones you want to auto authorize. So with his absence booked on Thursday, he's now going to book the holiday on Friday to rest, but he needs to check his entitlement first. So we go to holiday bookings, holiday requests, and we can view the statistics. So we can see his current allowance, any of his long service, any loo time that he might have as well, and then his balance. You can see he's got plenty of holiday. So we book a full day for the Friday. Now you can see here my selections allow me to make an all day, a half day before lunch and a half day after or a custom. So you can even custom design your times to see your business needs. This can all be done within the core system and you can enable and disable all of these features. So if you only want to allow all days or half days, you can do so. So we're going to book an all day. 
and that's done. So we now have the pending request and we've completed our requests within Portal. So I'll now return to the presentation. So that's now done. We've seen how we can customize the ranges, how we can view our entitlement, and it reduces the chain. So you don't have to go find your line manager, book a separate meeting. It's all just done by email and the line manager will receive emails with those requests to review. And you've got full control of your time. And if you've got access to employee portal outside of work, you could do this in your own time on a mobile device or a tablet or your own desktop. And we've got the auto authorize feature for sensitive subjects. So moving on, at two o'clock, Max has been asked by one of his staff whether he can move shifts and he needs to see what an appropriate shift to move him onto will be. So I'm now gonna demo within work patterns to show you how we can make flexible shifts. We can have a look through some alternative patterns, how you can set up pay ranges, break and lunch rules and set up tolerances. So this is Equator. And this is our time and attendance module. You can set up work patterns also in SFDC and personnel. Let's load one up for viewing. So this is a four on four off. These are our worked days. The grades are the days that are not worked. And you can see this is the work terms. This is when they're expected to work between here and the green is the break. And if I flip between the weeks, you see how they alternate. I'll show you some examples of some others. We've got flexi shift that allows you to clock to any time within that period. And we also have like a standard nine to five with an excess day working. It's always best to talk to a consultant. It's their bread and butter setting these up and they can help you meet, it, meet any of your business needs when it comes to shift patterns. So when we check our day definition, this is where we can see our pay ranges. So we could set it. So if we were to turn up to work between the standard working time, we would be paid the basic pay. And if you remember, Max is an hourly waged employee. So it'd be using these time clockings to work out which of these pay codes he should be paid at any time. If they arrive early to work or after work and there's an authorized overtime request, we've set it so they'll, they'll be given an overtime of 1.5 instead. With regards to tolerances, what we don't want is someone turning up to work at 8.45 ready for their nine o'clock shift, but being paid overtime. So what you could do is you could set up a tolerance of 30 minutes. And what that means is if an employee clocks in within 30 minutes of its start time, they're not paid overtime because they're deemed just to be there early getting ready. However, if they clock beyond the 30 minutes and they have an authorized overtime, then they'll be given the overtime rate. We can also set up breaks and lunches. You can define if it's a lunch or a break here. And also whether it's paid or unpaid. And generally, I think a lot of companies tend to use unpaid maximum time. Most places will have, say, an hour's break. And what it will do is it will work out your total hours, and then the system will deduct that maximum time one hour break when it comes to generating your payroll hourly data. And you can set up a Zoom clock-ins. So in some cases, some people might forget to swipe on their way back in, or maybe they just miss with their reader barcode. They'll be able to um, assume the clock in, so the system will be able to place that clock in for you instead. And that's work patterns. So I'll return back to the presentation. And what we have now is clocking out time. So Max clocks out at the biometric clock and that sets into out instantly. Gemma, on the other hand, she's in a bit, of a bit of a rush. She needs to pick her children up from daycare and she's forgotten to clock out at her desktop before she leaves. She remembers that she's booked Mark Creator Portal as a website on her phone and she's able to pick up her phone, access the website, and just like this, she's able to place a clock in, which is quite important because this is a production facility. It's 24 hours, so they need to know exactly who's in and who's out on the site in case of emergencies. And Monday's been completed. So let's see what these employees have to do on Tuesday. In the morning, there's some new inductees. At two o'clock, Max needs to book employees onto a manual handling training course. At 2.30, we'll see Gemma add those inductees into payroll. And then at three o'clock, we're gonna see how some holiday and absence requests are processed. So it's 11 o'clock. 
we've got some new inductees. And this is the induction schedule, which is within the personnel module. So it's a one place area where you can list all the policy documents and checklists that need to be completed by the new inductees. And you can assign training for any tra training that's required for that sp specific job role and assign the line manager. Within personnel, there's also areas where you can issue PPE or equipment such as a laptop or a hard hat, and you can set review days for, that, for those items. There's no printouts required throughout the process. It can all be managed within the system. The inductees have been inducted, and then we move on to Max, booking his employees onto a training course at two o'clock. So we've got ourselves a manual handling training course, and this is where you can maintain the record so you can set up the time and the dates and you could have it recurring so you could have it set to recur every month and those dates will populate here when you do so you can set the amount of people who can join the course and you can even set who's doing the training how much is costing you to provide it and you can open it to external attendees and charge them a fee you can also add cpd points if you're collecting just to show you how easy it is to assign attendees to the course You click on the assigned attendees and then you just click, click on the available employees and they'll get added to the course. They're now booked onto the course. If you wanted to remove them from the course, it's just a matter of clicking on the employees in the course attendees box instead, and then they'll get removed. And you can gain skills from performing the training, which is important because if you have SFDC and you have some manufacturing workflow, maybe you have a job called assemble handlebars, and it requires a skill of welding level three to start the job. You could perform the training for welding level three, and then you will attain the skill of welding level three. And because you have that skill, it will allow you to start that job. If you don't have that skill, then you'll find when you go to start the job, it won't allow you, or you'd have to provide a supervisor override to allow your authorization to start the job. So this is a useful method for doing this. Once all the training's been booked, it syncs with your work schedule and your holiday absence organizer. So you can see here on the work schedule, manual handling on the 17th appears as purple. So the employees can always, always see when they're booked in for the training. And then we move on to 2.30 and those inductees, we're gonna to have to actually add them to our payroll system. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demo and show you the one location where we can do this, how we'll set up some permanent values, manage that pension and their benefits in kind. So returning to Equator, we now want our payroll module. And I'll simply add an employee. And I'll, I'll put in a, a random employee number. I'm hoping it hasn't been used before. Now, what the system does, when you go to add the employee, there are some mandatory fields that need to be completed and it will prompt you to enter those fields. So so if I now save this record, it tells me I must enter my date of birth. A joining date, of course. What else? Ah, the address. What else? Ah, two lines, of course. A tax code. And it automatically focuses on those areas for you. And now we're done. And because it's a new starter, you could continue to fill out any information, whether you've received a P45 or a new starter checklist, such as student loans deductions, you could click here to make sure those are deducted. And you can enter any relevant information from current or previous employments from here. So this employee has now been added into payroll. So the next thing we want to do is we just want to add a permanent value against them. And what this is, is we know that this employee is going to work the same hours every week. Their, their work isn't going to change. So we click on pay elements. And we select these are pay codes. So basic pay. And we're going to say they're going to work 35 hours every week. Now, every time you run payroll, it will automatically add these 35 hours onto the pay slip. So there's nothing more you need to do with them. 
just to show you how easy it is to add them to a pension, select the scheme you want to attach them to, populate the number, the start date, and then you can put the amounts in. So we'll say the employee is three and the employer is five. And that will deduct those employees amount when your payroll is run. That's now added. We could also add an attachment of earnings order like council tax, or we've got, uh, you can assign vehicles within here and child payments, so your SMP, your SP, SPVP, all other statutory payment types, you would do it within here. And then I just want to point out benefits in kind. So you can generate your benefits for your P11D, or you can do it directly through your payroll. So I would click here, and I want to generate my benefits through payroll for cars and fuel and private medical. So that's set there. Now this is important because from April 2026, the government wants all benefits to be taxed through your payroll. So we've already actually got it set up here, ready to go for the future. And that is our employees added into payroll. So now our inductees have been added. We'll return back to the presentation. Gemma's done that. And now at three o'clock, we're going to see how some holiday and absence requests are processed by Max. So Max, because he's a line manager, he's going to receive his request in his email and it will display the name of the person and the name of the person and what time and where. So here we can see the name, when it's being taken, the reason. And we've got these two links. So the top one allows us to request it to review the request so we can see the entitlement, we can see when they want to take it, we can see what employees are in, so we've got plenty of cover, so that should be fine, but we want to go one step further. So within the management tab, we can check the staff roster, and we can see exactly what employees are currently in on that day. So that's fine. So we'll use the management center, and we can also authorize the holiday from here, so we're just going to authorize the holiday. And assuming it breaks no holiday rules, done. We'll show you the other method as well. So there's a there's another link below it and that's an auto authorized link. So we just want this to go straight through. We don't want to review it. You click that request and it's made. The holiday book and as long as it hasn't broken any rules, it's gone all the way through. And you get receipts. So once it's booked or if a request is cancelled, you'd be provided a receipt for that as well. Tuesday done, we move on to Wednesday and there's been an accident on the shop floor. At two o'clock, Max has to see where we are in production. He sees we're behind at 3.30, so he jumps onto an automator to help out, and then he works his overtime at five. So it's 11 o'clock, and Janet's walked out onto production floor again, and she's been hit by a moving forklift again. And we need to secure the area. So Max secures the area, and he needs a first aider quickly. He uses the graphical in outboard, which is on a big screen, up on the production floor and it's filtered by first aiders. So you can see exactly who's the first aider. So he's got a quick response time and he knows because of what terminal they're at, where they are at that moment. Now that Janet's been seen to and she's been sent to hospital, Gemma needs to record the accident and she'll have to create an absence for Janet at the same time. So we've got this extensive area where we can record the accident, detail any hazardous substances, what happened, the what, where, when and how, any consequences, outcomes, whether there's been any compensation paid out, and if there was any machinery at fault or damage during the process. And it's completely read or compliant. So you've got all the audit list there, and you can click the link to report the accident directly from here. And because, the, because an absence has been made for Janet, and it's worked out there was an accident earlier with that involved that employee, it already links the accident to the absence record. With the accident over, Max looks over production to see where they are and he notices they're behind. And he's because he's got real time and SFDC, he's got the current status board up on a production screen. He can see what employees are currently working and what they're working on. So this is filtered on booked against jobs at the moment, but it could be on all employees or you could have it to show employees who are booked to non-productive time, so who aren't currently doing anything. So you get an instant overview, and you can see in this case, they're not gonna meet the SLAs or KPIs. 
you could use it in real time or in this instance if you don't have real time but you've got sfdc and tna you could use the graphical in, in outboard so you can see here it's listed the employees and below their names it shows you the jobs and the operations they're currently working on so that's another method for doing this and there's catch-up processing so if someone started or finished a job earlier on but they forgot to clock it you can retrospectively add it using the catch-up process feature within real time Max knows they're behind, so he jumps onto an automator at 3.30. And automator is that device in the bottom left. All it does is take paper, folds it and places it into an envelope. And on the screens, he might have SFDC data capture set up, which is production friendly. It's made up of these big tiles that you simply click on. There's little room for error for you to make. Or you could use the SFDC and portal version, which is what you can see on the screen at the moment, which is similar. You can post the data direct into CISPRO, but if you're not using CISPRO, you could use Equator's shop floor data collection for your manufacturing workflow instead. And the portal's portable. Max could have a tablet on him. All the staff could have tablets on him as they move around different machinery. They could post using their tablet and portal SFDC. And just to show you how easy it is, I'm going to start a job. The employee logs in, sees a job he wants to start. Oh, let's check the materials. Where are they located? They're in that bin location, there's the stock, we get that issued. And then we click on our job to start. We wanna make 75. So that's now posted, we perform the work and we've completed it. So we enter our badge number again, we find our job and we can manage to complete the 75, but 10 of them did get folded, so they were damaged goods. So we report the damaged good code, and we scrap 10 of them. And all that's left to do now is to show you in CISPRO. There it is, the 75 completed. It's a damaged good and there's 10 of them. He works his overtime and somehow he catches up. Then on Thursday, there's a disciplinary meeting at 10. Max conducts some annual appraisals at 11. And then at 12, Max is just about to leave the hospital and he's worried about any potential bills from his private medical insurer. So he checks his PMI information to make sure he's valid. And he does that in portal. And then at 4.30, Jemmy uses the exception wizard to correct some missing clock-ins. No one likes them, but they are required. It's a disciplinary meeting. So we have the disciplinary detail stage where you can fully record all the information of what's happened, when and who and where, and you can see that you can manage all the different stages. So in this case, there was a verbal warning. We're now moving up to a first written warning. So throughout this disciplinary process, you've got a full audit trail of what you did. And then at 11, we've got some annual appraisals. So it's a slightly better topic than disciplinaries. And you can see here how we've got a general layout of what appraisal topics look like. And here it is zoomed in. So you can see the topics are being asked. There are responses. You can even assign scores to the questions and that follows all the way down. So you can create these appraisal topics and use the same ones for different employees working under different jobs. And you can set performance targets and objectives against them. And there's no need for paper. So you could store it all here, but we know some companies like to use paper. So if you have a paper method, you could attach it to the record using this button up here. And there's monitoring tools within personnel as well. So you can see how they're performing against their objectives and performance targets. With that done, at 12 o'clock, Max is soon gonna be leaving. So he logs into portal and he needs to review his benefits. So I'm now gonna show you how he can access his documents and review his benefits within portal. So here we are, we're back in portal. We're in the self-service self -service section and we can view our benefits. So I can see my pension, I can see my membership number. That's good to know. I can see the car that I have, my company car. I can see my salary and the review date. And then under general benefits, my childcare vouchers it even tells me that I have a salary sacrifice. But what I'm most interested in is my private medical insurance. It tells me here I am, Boo for God, here's my membership number. So I know I can phone them just before and make sure I can get my authorization before my hospital appointment later on. 
So with that done, he realizes he's not going to be in for the rest of the week. So I should probably download some documents so I could view my pay history and download some slips or maybe my P11D. And to do that, you just click on it and it will download in this window here. And once it's downloaded, you'll be given the options of whether you want to save it or email it or print it. And you can do that for all the years that you have data for. And also the same for P60s as well. And if you've left, you'll have a P45 here and you can set out within the system that for a limited time after an employee's left, they can have access to access just their P45. One other thing I'd like to turn your attention to is within the management tab. In the case of emergency, such as a fire, we have this emergency presence list. So I'd enter the emergency code here and it would list all the employees who are currently on site here and you can then check them off. Uh, you would need a, an internet connection to do that, but you could do it on a tablet. Uh, but if you have to go to a site, uh, let's say it's a field to your local collection area, and you don't have an internet connection, you could activate the server print function, which will print the list out for me onto a printer, which I can collect my way out, or it will email it to my personal device, so I can then check it from there. And with that done, Max leaves for hospital. And because Max has gone and there's some issues with the shift patterns and missing clock-ins, Gemma's going to have to correct these using the except exceptions wizard. And we're now going to see how we can fix errors, how user-friendly it is, how we can use it to change people onto different shifts, and how we can book holiday and absence using it. Now, this is my absolute favorite program within Equator because I am making mistakes all the time and it's fixing them for me. And I'm going to show you some examples. So this is within TNA. So we have our exceptions wizard. And then let's have a look at Graham. Graham's always forgetting to clock in. And Graham's forgotten to clock in again. So what we can do, it realizes we're missing a clock in. So all I have to do is right click on it and add a manual day. Now this will look at my shift pattern. It's worked out when that person needs to be in and when they need to be out. And it will even answer their lunch breaks. And all I have to do is hit process and it's now a valid clock in. Let's check another one. What about poor old Janet? Well, it's, it's identified there's an invalid clock in here. What's wrong with it? Oh yeah, Janet left at one o'clock, didn't she? So the system thinks she should have left at 5.30 against her work pattern, but because she got hit by the forklift truck, she was taken to hospital. So she actually departed at one. So what we can do is we'll use the latest time and it will ask us if we want to book an absence for the rest of the departure. So I'll click yes, and then poor old Janet, taken to hospital. And it does it for you, accept and validate. We have our valid clocking for the morning and then the authorized absence for when she was taken away. And then Adam, Adam's rather heavy handed when it comes to swiping. So he likes to double clock. So correct the invalid entries. And it's noticed that there's a, a duplication of record. So it'll accept and validate. And there we are. It's also a nice example of a night shift as well in action. And then just to show you, we can book someone onto an alternative shift. We have it for the 16th to the 17th. And we'll put them on a standard nine till five. And it will show here. So I want to add a, a, a holiday book in here. Not a manual day, a holiday. So I book my holiday. I enter my reason from here. And I'll click save. And it'll automatically do it for me. Holiday booked. We could do the same with absences as well. And that will run the program automatically for us. 
So you could do all this with an exceptions wizard. It's just fixed all those issues for me. So I'm moving back to the presentation. It's now Friday, the working week's almost up. So Max is now on annual leave, but Gemma needs to use the weekly pay summary because she needs to calculate the staff's worked hours and their expected pay rates. And then at two o'clock, she's prompted to make statutory payments and calculate Max's holiday pay. At three o'clock, Gemma uses the pension auto enrollment process. And with that complete, she's gonna submit her RTIs to HMRC. At 4.30, she'll then need to export the general ledger to CISPRO. So we now see that. So here we are, we have the weekly pay authorization screen and we can review the worked hours here. So this has taken our time clock in and it's worked out when we entered, when we exit and how many hours need to be paid against it. And then you run a, you can run the calculation and it's worked out that 35 hours should be paid to the basic and two hours should be booked to the overtime. And once this is done, we can transfer those hours to payroll where we use those hours and generate our pay slip for Max. And then at two o'clock, Gemma's going through and checking all the pay slip. So she's checking the variable pay input. Oh, and she's prompted to make a statutory maternity pay type. This is because we set up a child maintenance record for this particular employee and is recognized as within that date range. So you get automatically prompted to make the payments. So you'll never miss a payment. And it's, it works with other payment types as well. So not just Satchi maternity pay, but all the other Satchi types such as sick pay or paternity pay or shared parental pay. And with that done, it's the dreaded holiday pay calculation. So because Max is an hourly wage staff and he may work different hours, different weeks and get paid at different rates, we need to work out what his average is over the last 52 weeks. So what we've done here is we've entered the day we want to book and it will look back over the last 52 weeks and it will work out what the average weekly pay, daily pay and hourly pay should be. It can do this by looking back at the, at the work pattern if we have TNA included, or we can override the working days and the working hours in a week here to generate it. And if there's any issues, you can go into employee maintenance and there's a section there for holiday pay where you can see the 52 week details that have been used to calculate this. And if you see any errors, you can amend them from there. And at three o'clock with payroll out of the way, she just needs to run the pension reform process. So the pension reform at 2014 made workplace pensions an opt out rather than an opt in as we all know. And it's up to the employer to keep tabs on who's an eligible employee who's not an eligible employee and who might have postponed or not postponed. So we have this dedicated program and each month after you've run your payroll, you would just run this process. And what it would do is it will identify the employees and it will send them their relevant, relevant correspondence. And it'll do that for you each month. That's now completed. All we need to do is submit to HMRC. I'd like to take this moment to show you that we are a recognized provider by HMRC. You can see they're listed Nexus Solutions and Equator next to it. This is because we undergo the HMRC recognition process. It's a process that's not mandatory, but it's one that we like to do, where we evidence that our output exactly matches the same as HMRC. So it gives us and it gives you confidence that we're meeting HMRC's requirements and we are approved. So that's now done. And we have this nice area, the RTI internet submissions, where we can submit all our RTIs. And they could be your full payment submission, your employer payment summary, your Nino verification request, or if relevant, your early year update. And it's as simple as making sure the files are there, clicking OK, and you'll get a screen telling you that the submission was successful. If it wasn't successful, it will give you reasons as to why. The week is almost over. All Gemma needs to do now is review her accounts and export the general ledger to CISPRO. So she could just review the accounts by printing the report within general ledger, or she could 
they export these into SysPro, which we're going to do here, and it's as simple as this. Run the distribution program. It'll give you a journal number, 114. We will then check that within SysPro. Here we are. We can see the values, and we can see the credits and debits match up nicely, and Gemma's working week is completed. So we've just seen how Equator can be used to benefit your working week, and we'd just like to talk about some features and futures we've got coming. So some recent enhancements. We know how, di how diversity and inclusion is important, and we've added to the self-service section of Portal, where you can now update your own nationality, religion, and your ethnic group. Now with holiday rules, you generally would set up to say, for an example, I don't want any more than two employees of a department off on holiday at one time. <clears throat> but what happens if the headcount changes? That can be difficult to keep up to date with. So we've added the ability to add a percentage, so I may add 80% in instead. And this way, it will move with the headcount changes. I won't have to keep going in and changing the fixed, uh, the fixed figure. So some future enhancements. So the government are going to be asking companies to take flexible working requests more seriously. And we're adding into personnel an area where you'll be able to manage flexible working requests. We're adding a payroll headcount so you can see by period whether your, whether your department has grown or if it's shrunk. And currently, holiday and absence and overtime requests would get sent to your line manager. But what about if they're on holiday or they're on any other type of leave? Well, we're adding the, the ability to send it to an alternative manager. We're going to add single sign-on and multi-fender authentication um, support. So if you're signing in with a Microsoft account, you'll be able to use this for your single sign-on. And then you'll be requested to make your authentication with your multi-factor authenticator. And I mentioned earlier how Gemma was using her phone to access the bookmarked website instead to make a time clock in. Well, we're looking at going one stage further and adding Portal as an app. So we'll have a, a tile on the screen which you can access instead and lock you in. And I'd just like to finish on by saying 26, 900, 10,077. So for 26, Equator has been delivering for our customers at over 900 different sites. And we have currently 10,770 users currently using Equator on a daily basis. And we thank them for placing their trust in us. If you'd like more to learn, there are some links here. So we've got the main Equator page. We have a link to our fact sheets, and we also have a video showing you more about the modules if you're interested. And these have been added to the chat for you to see as well.